Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Matthew Charlesworth. Proclaim a joyful sound, and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth, the Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I'd like to welcome everyone to this Mass, and especially all of those at home. We will be including all of your prayers, those that you make at home and those that you've sent to us electronically. Before we begin our Mass, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, peace to people of good goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Philip went down to a city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the multitudes with one accord gave heed to what, said, what was said by Philip. When they heard him and saw the signs which he did. For unclean spirits came out of the many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice. And many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. 
for the Spirit had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. The response, cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome your deeds. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Before you all the earth shall bow down, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, awesome his deeds amongst the children of men. Cry Cry out out with joy joy to God, God, all the the earth. He turned the sea into dry land, they passed through the river on foot. Let our joy then be in him, he rules forever by his might. Cry out, Cry out with, with joy, joy to, to God, God, all the earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell you what he did for my soul. Blessed be God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold me from his merciful love. Cry, Cry out, out with, with joy, joy to, to God, God, all the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, in your hearts, reverence Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Yet, do it with gentleness and reverence. And keep your conscience clear so that when you are abused, Those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame, for it is better to suffer for doing right, if that should be God's will, than for doing wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If a man loves me, He will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. You will live also. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Before Jesus ascends, he needs to explain to the apostles that they will not be left alone, that he will send his spirit to be with them. In the first reading, we see Philip fulfilling a prophecy of Jesus that the good news would be preached in Samaria. Samaria was the home to the Samaritans, the neighbors of the Jewish people who they thought were foreigners and heretics. Given their inherent opposition to each other, Philip is being very bold in entering enemy territory to preach the word of God. So it is interesting to see here the unity with which the message of Jesus Christ was received. They could not argue with the truth that was demonstrated before their very eyes, and there was much joy in that city as they were confirmed. Joy is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Can we recall the joy we felt at our confirmation or at some other time in our faith journey? Peter teaches in the second reading that believers in Jesus must always be ready to give an account to anyone who asks for a reason for your hope. Peter imagines a situation of open hostility to the gospel in which Christians are being made to suffer for doing good. In a way, It could describe our current world, where believers are often dismissed or derided. Philip shared the truth with the Samaritans. Truth is another characteristic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not lie. That is the preserve of the evil spirit, whom, among his many titles, is known as the Prince of Lies. This spirit of truth is often seen in the gifts of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. To be open to the Spirit means being open to the truth as it is revealed to us. This is never a static event, but a continuous deepening of understanding and learning. For if we are in relationship with God, then God's desire to deepen that relationship with us will entail us having to be always open and alert to what God is doing in our lives. Give thanks for those moments of insight and understanding. In today's Gospel, Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you desolate. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Counselor to be with you forever. This Counselor is the Holy Spirit, a gift from the Father and the Son to us, so that we are never alone. The Holy Spirit offers other gifts or signs of her presence, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. When the Holy Spirit is present in our lives, we see it in the fruits of charity, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. We know that when we lack these in our lives, when we are unkind, not at ease, impatient, jealous, angry, we need only ask God for the grace to see His Spirit and invite the Holy Spirit back into our lives. Sometimes this can be done by taking a moment to pray or to say sorry. Sometimes one might need sacramental grace as well, But don't underestimate your own prayers. As I often share in the confessional, the evil spirit is constantly working against the Holy Spirit. Our choice as Christians is to learn to listen for and to the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the evil spirit are despair, a desire to compare and to lie. We need to ground ourselves in the joy and truth of the Holy Spirit. We cannot know the Spirit unless we can recognize the truth. The very idea of truth is under threat in our world. Our belief in God is based on something true. We cannot share that unless we are aware of that truth. One of the ways the Spirit works in the world is that it opens our eyes and allows us to see again, 
to see not only the truth of what is before us, but to see Christ and Christ's suffering in the poor. If ever we needed to remind ourselves of the truth in our world, let us look at the poor, for they cannot hide behind airbrushed falsehoods. Their lives are real, and we would be good not to forget both them and the raw, truthful challenge they present to us. Finally, in many of our Catholic schools, we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. So to our learners and teachers who build the communities of love and support that we so desire in our schools, but also to the parents who sit on parent bodies, governing boards, help at tuck shops, or do anything to help our Catholic schools, and who for a few weeks ago were having to be the teachers themselves as many of our Catholic schools adopt, adapted to offering lessons online. Thank you. In fact, we should say thank you to parents much more often in the church, as they are the first catechists and educators of their children. But for what everyone does for Catholic schools, I want to say thank you. Parents, please encourage your children to actively decide to be friends with the lonely to refuse to allow bullying to take place in your school and to stand up for the weak and the persecuted. And children, you don't need to wait to hear from your parents. In fact, very often the way you love, the way you are kind and generous, the way you respond to the Holy Spirit with such spontaneity and simplicity and innocence actually helps your parents to learn from you or more accurately, to relearn what they have forgotten. And always find time to play, because it is in relationship with each other where so many of these fruits, such as joy, peace, forgiveness, and understanding, are made visible and real to you. Let's give thanks for the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the lives of our children. Amen. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried in, with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Let us renew the promises of our baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to God, those at home and those we make here now. For Pope Francis, that God would continue to bless him with the grace of leadership as he shows the Church how to be an effective sign of God's love and care in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who feel orphaned or betrayed by the Church, we pray for those who have found themselves alienated from the Church, the divorced, the LGBTI community, those abused by clergy, 
those who have met with unkindness and bad pastoral care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who at this time are unable to participate in the Christian community because of lack of access, that they would find God's grace and comfort and know that the Lord is present and active in their lives at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For teachers and learners, that God's grace would help them to continue to teach and learn in these challenging times. May they seek not just intellectual formation, but a formation that forms mind and soul. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who work in education, especially in our Catholic schools, that the Holy Spirit would grant them wisdom and discernment as they discover ways that the Lord is leading them in forming young people into men and women for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all burdened by worry, anxiety, because of loss of their livelihoods, that they may find assistance from the church, government and society, and that we would reach out in care to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are ill, that God will restore them to health and to their loved ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the many online intentions we have received, that God, knowing your prayers and what you need, would hear them and answer them in the way that God knows best. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that we can make all these prayers, spoken and unspoken to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes, be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes, be God Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for the glory of God's church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy is Lord God of hosts. 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Buti Tlachale and Duncan Sorke, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died, in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, Lord, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide with you forever. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts strength of this saving food. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and joy of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Thank you.